Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated, and today I'm doing another pickup. So this is the scrap I'm taking back. Uh, quite a few laptops there. Probably get about 300, 350 for that. And then I'm picking up about 700 laptops. Um, I was told they're pretty much stripped, so uh, I lowballed them, and they took the offer. So we'll see what that means. Uh, stripped laptops. That can be a good thing or it can be a bad thing. I mean, you can strip high quality laptops or you can strip junk laptops. Um, so if they're uh, laptops that have been well maintained, you know, by a school or whatever, then, you know, it's not good that they're stripped, but they could still be um, working machines in good shape, uh, in which case um, it, it's still going to be worth it, especially worth it at the price I paid. So. We'll see what happens. We'll see if I uh, get a great deal or if it's a bunch of junk like these. I'll see you in a few. Well, I'll make this quick because it's raining, but wow. Oh my gosh. Wow. So, as happens sometimes, you know, you show up at the recycler and they say, Hey, you're here, and we got all this other stuff besides what you bought. And uh, that happened this time. So tons of uh, power cords, chargers of different types, and 380 iPods, I think. I mean, it's like, it's like candy. I've never seen any like these, um, in this quantity at least. Uh, just tons and tons and tons of iPods. I paid six bucks each for them. Hopefully I didn't screw myself too badly. Some are scratched up, a lot are scratched up. But, wow. So, anyway, yeah, lots of additional stuff it made this a more interesting pickup than I anticipated. So, two pallets, six or eight boxes sitting on top, and then the iPods. So, we'll see what this looks like when we get back. All right, made it back. Uh, things slipped a little bit. You can see how this pallet is shifted to the left. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but the, the van is kind of tilted to the left. Uh, because all of the weight is on the left side. So, uh, yeah, it is a lot of weight, and white unibodies aren't light computers either. So, anyway, we'll get started. All right, so I'm back, and I got everything unloaded. It took a little while, and wow, what a more interesting lot of stuff than what I anticipated. I thought I was just going to get, you know, six, seven hundred totally trashed uh, laptops, but... Uh, so much more. Um, so yeah, the white unibodies, I don't know what 500 are here or so. Um, they turned out uh, really well. And it's it's what I've seen many, many times, you know, a school or whatever just decides to decommission a, a whole class of machines, whether they're good or not. And these were very, um, you know, well taken care of. They just stripped everything out and uh, here are the computers. So the average one of these is, is very, very nice for um, white unibodies. So I'm, I'm really happy with my low ball price. I'm gonna do well with these. I'll just sell these in, in 10 packs or whatever. So very happy with that. So the problem with institutions ripping machines apart in order to tear out the hard drives is that by not putting them back together, you are leaving these machines vulnerable and the entropy at that point accelerates. So machines like this, this, this stack was probably 95% working when the institution decided to retire it. But now that, it, that it's reached me, it's probably about, I don't know, 60% viable. Um, so when they use a crowbar and rip the bottom case off because they can't be bothered to use screws, uh, first of all, where are you gonna get 500 bottom cases? That, that's a massive problem. Plus you lose the case screws. Plus then when they use a crowbar to rip the battery out, uh, you lose the battery, you lose the battery screws, you might rip the, the screw holes off the board or off the case so that you can't put another battery in. Then you lose the hard drive, you lose the hard drive rail, you lose the hard drive screws, you lose the RAM. Um, the idiots who pull the RAM out probably break the little clasps off so that the board's bad. Then they transport them with, you know, board on board, and with the movement of the truck, it scrapes chips off the board, 
And, you know, the pallets of these machines, they leave a, a trail of, of chips on the ground as they travel. It's, it's, it's hideous. And then, you know, because there's no bottom case, um, the hard drive cables dangle off out the side and with weight and movement, it acts like a razor and just cuts those off. So probably about a third of these machines no longer have viable hard drive cables. Um, yeah, and it's just sad. It's, it's like the human body. It, it's like the toughest person can be killed by having a cut that's not treated because bacteria gets in there and it just undermines the whole thing. Uh, the same is true with laptops. Um, and it's just sad to see that, you know, this is how they're processed. And honestly, this is the best of it. This is the best case scenario. Um, yet, <laughs> this is the best, yet there are millions and millions and millions that are, are worse off, that have no chance of getting refurbished. And no one cares, no one sees it, no one does anything. So it's just sad, it's, it's really pathetic. The Unibody Pros, uh, not quite the same condition. I don't know, maybe they didn't come from the same place. Uh, I'm not complaining, they're pretty nice, but you know, just not the same class of quality as, as these guys. And all the usual machines here, happy to get a stack of pretty nice titaniums back there, some clamshells. Uh, orange ones are good, or tangerine rather. Uh, people always want that one. It, it's funny, you have a hundred of these and they always go towards the, the orange ones. Um, so yeah, all the usual stuff. A couple more stripped minis that have been demolished and cables ripped out and stuff like that. Makes me sick to see that, but whatever, that's how it is. Um, power cords. These are dirty, they're OEM Apple, but they're dirty. These are always hard to, to get rid of. If they're um, brand new Apple with the sort of black cardboard sleeve, they're, they're worth something, but like that, not really. Um, it's interesting, the person who put these together wrote down descriptions of everything. Uh, then we have other power cords there. They're like, you know, Mac Mini style power cords. Those are actually, I'm, I'm glad I have those. And then, we have the, I think they're the 12 volt charging bricks for iPods, iPhones, that kind of thing. Uh, those go for, I want to say $3, $3.50, that kind of thing. Uh, then some normal AC adapters, tons of lightning cables. They're OEM lightning cables, but um, they're used. So they tend to fall apart quickly. Uh, and I'd actually rather use those personally than, than these, because these just do not hold up. And then the little wall adapters. Um, I don't know what those will go for, probably a dollar. Um, interesting here, what is this? Oh, they're for cinema displays. Um, haven't had some of these in a while, and I've never seen this giant one. Look at that thing, it's crazy. Must be for the, the biggest monitor they make, or made. Um, so lots of those. Good to have, I guess. But uh, anyway, the uh, the star of the show or the star of the pickup is definitely the iPod lot. I mean, look at this. This is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Like there are original iPods here. Like there's the big old FireWire connector. Like like this, this is the first iPod. I hope it works. They're worth a few hundred dollars if they do. But it's it's like someone collected iPods for years or for the whole history of iPods and here they are like I, I just don't know how this happens exactly um, I'm not well versed at at iPods so I can't really give you that great of a tour but but there's everything every every version um, older newer got the U2 iPod with the signatures there. Two of them, three of them. Hey, got the Nanos. I think these are Nanos. These, I always like these, sort of an interesting form factor. And um, yeah, it just goes on and on. Early touches, these things, it's like candy. Some of them are damaged, some of them have bad screens. Most of them, 
look reasonably good. These guys, a lot of scratches. I mean, look at that. I don't know why so many of them are so scratched up, but I don't know. It's like they've been on the floor or something. But um, yeah, just tons and tons of these things. So I imagine I'll just, ooh, is that a skin? That must be like a third party. I don't remember that color, but um, okay, there's a newer one, 1509. But yeah, so pretty crazy. So I'll probably just, I've got the, the DFU wiping station set up upstairs, so I will just go through all these and separate the, the ones I'm able to wipe from the ones that are defective and, and deal with them that way. But wow, just what a, what a crazy thing to run across. I, again, I, I just can't conceive of how an institution could col manage to collect all of this. It, it's, it's just very odd. Um, but I'll take it. And uh, I paid, what did I pay? I paid $6 each. So I think I probably will make out pretty well. I mean, the more desirable ones I'll sell in batches and I'll make that money back pretty quick. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, really interesting pickup. Um, need to start selling stuff off in bulk so I don't get completely buried because it's getting a little ridiculous around here. <laughs> As you can see, my car is not in the garage. My car is out there because of all of this. So, oh, wanted to mention too, uh, the Xbox 360s. There's a stack there of the black ones and a stack there of the white ones. And um, I'm selling, I'd like to sell a hundred of these for $500. Uh, they're as is, they have not been tested. They don't have hard drives. They don't have controllers, they don't have cables. Um, and recycler stuff tends to be about 50 to 70% working, mostly working. And then the rest is kind of for parts, um, just to let you know. But uh, yeah, I'd like to offload like a hundred of these guys, probably 50 white, 50 black, They'll probably be more than a hundred. I'll probably find a lot more than a hundred and, and give away a lot more than a hundred. But uh, I'd like to find someone who knows how to deal with these um, and offload them to that person so that they can take care of these properly and get them refurbished. Uh, I am not that person. I just don't have time for something like Xboxes. Um, so yeah, so you'd have to come to Minneapolis and pick them up. Obviously, I'm not going to ship this stuff. Uh, shipping by pallet uh, freight would not be cost effective. It would take two pallets. Each pallet would cost, you know, three, four hundred dollars. So five hundred dollars plus six hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars. That makes it not really viable. And it's funny. I posted a, this offer on Twitter and everyone wants it, but it really kind of highlights the uh, the fact that, that shipping kills so many deals, you know, people can't travel out to get these. They can't rent a truck to drive across the country to get these. Uh, it doesn't make sense to ship these. So basically you just kind of have to find someone within range. Um, and also someone who's crazy, <laughs> um, to, you know, come get them locally. That's really the only way to make this kind of thing work. But, you know, as usual, the, the issue with shipping kills machines because, you add the shipping in and then suddenly it's not viable to do anymore at all. So anyway, uh, I think I'll end it there and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.